and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Honorable, Excuse me. are you okay? Very well. Honorable John Peter Amu, MP for Kohoi, and Minister Designate for Railway Development. This is your first time as a member of Parliament, but you have been a Minister of State, charge of two ministries, first lands and natural resources, and then energy. These are all I know. Is there anything else we must know? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Riley Purib. My name is John Peter Amel. I hail from Popoe in the Volta region. I've gone to the late Simon Peter Amel and my mother, Gertrude Anani Agbele, in some village called Litoji in the Hawaii district. The chairman currently married to Sassinam, a black boy. We have three children, Fafali Amewu, Jifa Amewu, and Emefa Amewu. Briefly, Mr. Chairman, I'll take you through my educational background. I started my education in primary school in Andropo. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, yeah, uh, just tell us the last one. The last one you obtained. Tell yeah. out in my uh, CV, details in my CV, and as you write out, uh, once a Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, ended up at Ministry of Energy as a Sector Minister. Chairman, and currently Chairman, the Chairman the Minister, minister from minister. what period to what period, for a record? You were once Minister for Lands and Forestry. What period to what period? What was your start? What was your sunset? You want to guide us with that? I'm not perusing that aspect of your seat. Mr. Chairman, uh, I was at the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources from February 2017 to August 2018. Uh, Minister of Energy from September 2018 to December 2020, Mr. Chairman. To December or to January? Uh, December uh, 2020, that's January uh, 7th as a sector minister. Well, did your mandate as Minister for Energy end on 31st December 2020, is that what you are suggesting? No. As a minister for... Ministry of Energy, minister, in your CV, September 2018 to December 2020. And I'm saying, is it correct to suggest that your mandate ended 31st December 2020? That cannot be correct. Probably see January 2021. My mandate should be ended in January 7, 2021. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, Chairman, you are going to the Ministry for Railway Development. Does Ghana have a railway development plan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ghana, as a country, has a comprehensive World detailed uh, railway development uh, plan across uh, length and breadth of this country. Uh, I currently have a copy of the railway development plan that has been uh, designed uh, and concluded by the current government. Work has started with uh, successive governments. Uh, the current government has amended the development plan that was commenced. Uh, some years back. So yes, of course, Mr. Chairman, currently we have uh, a railway development master plan. Chairman, in the nominee's briefing, 
as a sector minister designate, what has been brought to your attention in terms of railway development in the country? What should Ghanaians expect? What is going on from Tema, Akusumbu, Takwa? Mr. Chairman, the existing, net, the existing railway network in the country is made up of three major lines. Uh, the western, eastern, and then the central line. Cumulatively, these add up to 947 kilometers. Mr. Chairman, the existing network is largely confined to the southern parts of the country, uh, with the city of Kumasi being its northernmost parts of the lines that have been built. Mr. Chairman, these lines were built during the British colonial period, and they are all narrow gauge with single tracks with a maximum axle load of about 16 tons. Largely not operational except for freight currently that we see uh, along some of the lines. The current passenger line that we have runs from Accra to Kumasi, which was operational sometime, but had to be put to a halt as a result of the, the COVID. Uh, the state of the current infrastructure, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's the development of the western line from Takradi to Kumasi, which is 340 kilometers, the redevelopment of the eastern line from Chema through Accra to Kumasi, which is also 330 kilometers. The construction of the central spine from Kumasi through Paga, 595 kilometers on the Burkina Faso border. And also the Ghana Burkina Faso Railway Connectivity Project. Development of Metro Line Rail, uh, also both in Accra and Kumasi, are also high uh, in the agenda. So, Mr. Chairman, briefly, uh, that's uh, some of the uh, important points within uh, the current railway development master plan that, that we have. Okay, Chairman, uh, Mr. Nomini, you are a Minister for Energy. We will come to your performance at that level. But, Chairman, on the 7th of January, when the Speaker was to be elected with Parliament being sworn in, in some of the videos that we have watched and in some of the con commentaries that we have heard, regrettable uh, incident, which is a uh, uh, platform. I want to uh, withdraw that word unconditionally. Uh, my constituents, of course, are watching me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm a peaceful man. Um, uh, of course, uh, it, the use of the word came out of overreaction, which is, of course, one of my negative aspects, overreaction. Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to work on that. When, I am conditionally overreaction, were you saying in a fit of anger? Yes, Mr. Chairman, in, a, in a, an anger mood, I use that uh, word. Who angered you? So who angered you? Who angered you? Follow up to Chairman. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I wish my entry to the hall uh, should have been played back uh, as a five first timer entry into this hall. Uh, my good friends, colleagues uh, from the part of region that I came from, together with other members, welcoming a, in quite a, a bit hostile way. I thought, uh, as a new member, having won a very difficult seat. Uh, as we chair out, only to be hooted at Juloe, uh, Chiapito, you know, and all those words. Uh, that actually was a trigger, but jokingly, they were of course joking. That was also a trigger of my anger by using that word. Mr. Chairman, I reiterated uh, to say that I unconditionally withdraw the word. Mr. Chair, just for clarification, because you see, you, I, I was here myself, that when the Volta Caucus main receive you in that joking language and you say that you jokingly said i'll kill you i'll kill you remember no. he, 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 he said a, a fit of anger i thank you so you were joking okay yes thank you mr mr chairman uh, Honorable nominee, I'm sure 
and you have been briefed by the Ministry for Railway De uh, Development. Um, and, uh, in those briefings, you must have been told that one major challenge that confronts the Ministry for Railway Development is the unavailability of land and, 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 and challenges associated with land acquisition for the right of way. Now, if, if, if you're given the north, how do you intend to navigate around this very difficult issue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's a fact that right of way is gradually graduating to a very serious problem within the railway uh, ministry in terms of acquisition of land for the tracks. If this honorable house grant me the nod going forward, we would have to include the cost of acquisition of land in the project cost. The problem in the past was as a result of separating land acquisition from the construction. Because most of this funding are global funds that are sourced specifically for the project, my understanding and my thinking, if given the nod, is that if we built it in as a component of the project construction cost, then payment of acquisition becomes easier and right of way will quickly be acquired for construction and completion of the railway line projects. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, uh, Honorable Amu, um, globally, globally, funds for capital intensive projects are currently very limited due to the COVID pandemic. And yet, we know that railway development requires huge investment with good returns on the investments. But in the face of the COVID pandemic, how do you intend to attract investment for the development of the railway sector? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the railway sector generally should be looked as a social project. Uh, I deviate lightly from the school of thought that believe that the railway should be an investment project. If the railway sector is taken as a social project for which government funding of the project will reflect on the balance sheet of the government, then the after effect of the railway which will drive the growth of the GDP will be worth paying for the cost of construction. Mr. 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 Chairman, it is very difficult for a global fund these days, say $2.4 billion, to be run on a railway track of about 2,000 kilometers and expect a payback period between 30 and 50 years. I don't see any investor doing that. No prudent investment analysis will trigger such decision to commit such a fund. But if rather government puts that on its balance sheet as a debt, and the impact of the construction generates economic growth in terms of GDP growth, then that will be worth paying. So I'll be considering the railway project as a social investment project, rather as a social project, rather than an investment uh, project or product. But notwithstanding that, Mr. Chairman, some of the routes are still profitable. And so if it is analyzed and determined that investment decision will be taken based on profitability index and the investors are convinced beyond all reasonable doubt, of course, we will identify those who based on their analysis and give it out to them as an investment product. For instance, there is a school of thought that the continuation of the railway line from Tema, you know, through Akosombo to Mpakadam, that particular line, uh, which will end up in uh, Burkina Faso as a a continental a development project. That line, for instance, you know, has been classified by most ana analysts as a profitable venture. Those one can go into investment product where we can package it, you know, maybe on both operate and transfer for uh, a larger period or as a concession for the investors. Uh, Mr. Arabola uh, Mew, some transport analysts have argued that in our country, Ghana, which has a huge infrastructure deficit with respect to uh, our road network, which is estimated 
to be in the tune of 5 billion US dollars. That it is not even necessary to have a ministry, such as a ministry for railway development, and, and, and seek to invest in that sector. But rather that we should concentrate on bridging the gaps or the deficit with respect to the, 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 the road sector. With those views, do you think the ministry that would superintend over if given the nod is relevant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would beg to differ from uh, the school of thought uh, about the deficit. Yes, of course, the deficit exists in the range of about five billion, as you, you rightly put it. And the attention, therefore, for any emerging country might be let's not concentrate on other sectors, but let's put attention on the rules and begin to fix our rules. Mr. Chairman, the, the railway sector has its own advantage. The lifespan of most of our rules that we witness in the country maximum it's 11 years a railway sector that is well con constructed can take up to uh, you know a maximum a minimum of about 50 years the advantage is that when you put your railway lines in order then you are going to migrate traffic from the current existing dense traffic on our roads to the railway already most of our tracks you know that flies on the the road are above the axle load but because they don't have any alternative routes to use they were forced to go on those routes and that is why we have most of our rules within a few you know years currently are in a very deplorable state with the construction of the railway sector you are going to migrate those traffic onto the rail line one great advantage that the railway line also does is that a number of passengers and goods can be moved within the shortest possible time for instance the standard gauge that the country is trying to introduce now uh, it's going to run at a speed of about, almost about 160 you know, kilometers per hour. What that does is that people will get to their destination you know, on time. Productivity will increase because if you quite recollect you sit in a railway, you can you know, confidently conduct your business in a railway. So people who will be in a railway can equally be working in the railway line because of the stability and the level of angles at which it travels up. So with the introduction of railway, we expect growth in GDP uh, of this country. And that is why I think that we need to combine both the railway and then the road. His Excellency President uh, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado in his inaugural address stated categorically about his intention, you know, to make sure that the railway industry becomes a very viable sector in this country. And I think that we have to work in accordance uh, with that uh, direction. You are done, right? No, I'm not allowing you. Yes, honorable. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some document to assist us. No. I'm grateful, honorable chair. Congratulations, honorable John Peter Amewu, on your nomination. Let me take you back to your uh, previous portfolio at the Energy Ministry. On 24th May 2019, in your press briefing, you indicated, among other things, that the energy sector arrears, as of January 2019, stood at $2.748 million. You went further to forecast that an additional $1.268 million will be added to the debt within the same year. In your conclusion, you intimated that the debt will grow to more than $12.564 million by end of 2023. What, in your view, contributed to this compounding debt, and what interventions did you undertake to minimize this increase in debt during your tenure? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, it's true. I raised those points uh, wise at the, the sector. Uh, there were various factors that contributed to the debt we have within the energy sector. Uh, key among them uh, has to do with the consumption of energy by the various uh, metropolitan ministries, departments, and agencies. Uh, Mr. Chairman, another point has to do with the losses. The losses are both what we witness at the distribution end and also at the supply end where we have a lot of power theft 
and collections that have not been key in properly. We have managerial uh, problems also within the sector. Mr. Chairman, among them also is the obsolete equipment that we have currently within the electricity sector. Most of the uh, equipment uh, that we have are some that are lasting quite close to about 40, 50 years and have not been replaced. When you have this sort of obsolete equipment, you know, transmission of electricity through them is at risk because you will lose most of the, you know, the current before they get to the burner tip where the consumer is waiting to, 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 to get it. So this couples of factors, you know, are very key in raising the, the debt we have in the system. One of the key factors has to do with the feed. By the feed, I'm talking about the fuel or the gas. The gas supply is also a component of the electricity. Don't forget that electricity is just a derived demand. So at that end, other factors that go in to drive the generations are also key components. And so if you add all these components together, our estimation was rightly what we, 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 we said. But Mr. Chairman, that assertion was based on the fact that if nothing is done, we go with a debt profile as I've stated. Uh, fortunately, before I left the ministry, we put in a lot of measures uh, with the assistance of cabinet. We came out with the energy recovery program. Uh, we have done the master gas house clearing processes. Uh, we have tried to migrate some of the power plants that were previously feeding on uh, hard fuel, heavy fuel. Of course, Mr. Chairman, gas is cheaper. So where you have a stranded gas that has not been put into good use and you are using a heavy fuel, you expect the benefit price that the consumer pays to be higher. Currently, most of our generations, more than 60 to 65 percent, are running uh, on gas together with their Kosombo. So these measures that we put in, gradually it's addressing the, 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 the energy debt problem that we have. Mr. Yes, Chairman, I also use this opportunity to announce to Ghanaian that as today, uh, Ghana government has fully paid its debt that it owes ECG. All the debt that Ghana government owes, including the debt from the municipal, metropolitan, district, ministry, have been fully paid by the Ministry of Finance. And I think that that is a very good thing that the government has done. And ECG currently is even owing Ghana, gas, Ghana government an amount of about 400 million Ghana cities, which is yet to be reconciled. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very well, Honorable Minister. Now on railway development. I'm finding eminent expression the railway master plan, which I suppose you obtained briefing on, uh, two major developments, the central line and the central spine. Uh, if you have obtained briefing on these developments, can you advise the committee on the status of each of these developments? Uh, considering that Central Line specifically passes through major towns in Asin South constituency, Asin Adiemra, and even Asin Central, Asin Dompima, and Asin Fosu. And assurance that you, you would give, one given the note, that you would develop this line with alacrity to the benefit of the people of Asin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes, of course, the Central Line, just the Central Spine, just as the Western lines are very key you know, uh, railway track to the, 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 the master plan. Uh, currently, work is progressing on the western uh, line. Uh, a lot of feasibility studies have been done on the central spine, and other work have also been done on the uh, uh, eastern line. So uh, I'm giving the House this uh, assurance that if the House give me the note, uh, I will move everything possible to make sure that this line is completed. The advantage of this line is the fact that it goes to some of our mineral deposit areas. Currently, for instance, most of our bauxite and magnesium that have been transported have been done through the normal transportation system using road. And that is putting a lot of traffic on our roads and our roads are not lasting as we expect. It is expectation that if these lines are completed and the fact that they will be going through some of these mineral deposit areas, haulage will of course becomes very easy for the mine owners. And it is also reduced cost of transportation, which will therefore add value to government share in some of these mining communities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Zuela. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And good afternoon, Honorable Nominee. My first question has to do with the one district, one factory.
project in the first term of the NPP government. You will agree with me that it was one of your flagship programs. And uh, I think some factories were constructed across the country. But we've also received reports about some of them not being connected to electricity and uh, the failure of the energy ministry then to facilitate the connection of these factories to electricity. What would you say were the reasons why these factories couldn't be connected and at the time that you were sector minister for energy? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's, it's a fact that the one district, one factory is one of the key government uh, policies uh, that uh, translates to its project. Uh, when, at the time of the sector minister, we had a lot, uh, a number of requests for the project. Uh, I can tell you on record uh, that we have done more than 60% of those requests that have come to us. We make sure that we send electricity to those areas. Of course, a number of them we've not been able to complete because some were requesting for transformers of different capacity. At that point in time, the chairman, we do not have some of those transformers in, in stock. But the materials that were available under our disposal, then with the collaboration of the electricity company of, of Ghana, we've been able to extend electricity to some of those uh, areas. But yes, of course, it's on record that we've not been able to do all the 100%. My understanding is that because this is quite key to us, uh, the incoming minister, as I've briefed him already, is going to take it up and make sure those areas that have not been connected, he will do to make sure that completion of those areas are also done within the shortest possible time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. My next question is on gas. Ghana is known to have excess supply of gas and uh, your ministry, whilst you were at energy, you supervised the construction of an LNG reception and regrowth gasification facility, which commits Ghana to extra gas that we do not need. In the event that this contract is terminated at any time, would you agree with me that it will be tantamount to causing financial loss to the state? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I supervise the construction of uh, uh, an import terminal of an LNG uh, while I was a sector minister. Uh, currently, as we speak as of today, uh, the demand supply balances uh, of our gas projected in the future gives us an indication that there may be some deficit going into the future. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, the major reasons why that project is coming on is not coming on as an element to balance demand and supply, but it's coming in as a security of supply issue. The energy sector is quite a very dicey sector. You would have witnessed the difficulty we have with our gas coming from Nigeria when the pipeline got broken. So to keep our light on, it is proper that we put in measures to have a security of supply. And so that project is generally described as a security of you know, supply measure to address the gas in the future. By 2027, the energy demand balances of gas clearly tells us that we may have some deficit from 2027, which is uh, about six, five years from now to go. So it is also built in aspirations of the demand that may arise in future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, there is a follow-up, if you don't mind, with your leave. Honorable Domni, uh, my colleague was asking you about a matter related to termination of contract and its possible judgment death effect. Have you had the cost to terminate any contract upon assumption of office, I mean the Ministry of Energy, either you or your predecessor? Uh, 
with regard to this specific project, there had not been any uh, discussions to terminate the, the, the project, not at all. That discussions have not come up, Mr. Chairman. And we do not intend to terminate that project, Mr. Chairman. Have you done any, have you terminated any other contract? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there is another LNG project called Wagel, uh, which was supposed to be cited in Takwadi. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that project was terminated. It was not terminated by the ministry. It was terminated at convenience uh, by the supplier. So yes, of course, Wagel terminated that contract on its own. Is it the one that has resulted in 134 million judgment debt? If not, won't apprise us with that one. Yeah, it's the one that resulted into about 50 million uh, judgment debt. There were two contracts that were terminated. Uh, one was a power project, which is the GPGC, and then the other is the LNG project. The LNG resulted in a judgment debt of about 50 million US dollars. Yes, you can have your last Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a follow-up to the first, the second question. Uh, Mr. Nomni, please, consider the effect of the surplus gas on Ghana. What plans would you say you left behind to address that serious problem? Uh, the issue of the surplus gas, uh, which was becoming a more of a problem in terms of the debt that the energy sector has, uh, has been addressed through a number of ways. The first was to institute what we call the, uh, the natural gas clearinghouse methodology. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have gas coming from three different sources in Ghana. We have, uh, just excuse me to say, the uh, OCTP, which we call the ENI gas. We have gas coming from Nigeria, which we call the pipeline gas. And then we also have the gas coming from the 10 and Jubilee, which is the associated uh, gas. Uh, Mr. Chairman, those gases, for instance, the Jubilee and 10 gases were priced at 1.2 and 1.75, you know, per MME BTU. Gas coming from Nigeria is priced at a different price, you know, uh, if I can remember, about $7.9 per MME BTU. And then our own domestic gas also priced at a different, you know, level. So the, there was a complete confusion in the sector as to how these gases do commingle together, be spent by various uh, power users who we pay for. So what we have done is to come out with uh, an average system to price all these gases. So currently, all the gases have been commingled and they've been priced at a price of 6.08 MMBTU you know, uh, uh, units. What that does is that Anybody that is, of course, consuming gas above, you know, the, uh, the average price, of course, would have to pay for by those who are consuming gas below the average price. So, for instance, if you are taking more of the uh, Jubilee gas, which you are expected to pay about 1.27, then because of the commingle price, you will now be paying an extra more than the 2.77. You are expected to refund that balance to another sector, say VRA. So the gas clearinghouse system is now putting in measures to make sure that we are about to address these imbalances in the payment of the gas. This is one of the major things that we have left behind to address some of the wastage in the gas system. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Brandt. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Is that no I have heard you give answers on contract termination about two questions in that direction. But I want to be very specific on this one. Uh, the International Court of Arbitration has awarded a cost of $134 million and an interest of $30 million against the government of Ghana. Over a cancellation of the emergency power agreement with GCGP Limited. One, were you the minister responsible at the time of the termination? And if so, what led to the termination and what is all this uh, termination and judgment debt about? If you can be very specific 
to the committee and to Ghanaians to understand what has happened. The, the government of Ghana, uh, represented by the Air Ministry of Power, signed a gas and sales purchase agreement with the West Africa Gas Limited, which we call WAGA. Uh, and that is the seller dated on 7th of October 2015 for supply of 120 million cubic feet standard feet of gas, which of course is regasified, uh, known as the LNG, for an initial period of five years. We have following a uh, counter proposal dated on the 15th of March 2016. The seller has reviewed this term uh, where the initial period had now been moved from five years to 10 years and the gas price brought down to $3.3 per MMBTU uh, from uh, 2.3 to 2.4. 2 so the period has changed from five to 10 years and the price has also reduced to 2.22. Uh, um, on an assumption of office uh, by uh, this government, there were an attempt to re-engage the, uh, the WAGEL, which is a company, uh, about the model of construction and siting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I quite remember that the site has been relocated to uh, Second D from Tema. Discussion progressed on how soon the construction will co 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 uh, commence. Uh, my understanding that was that the uh, Wagel, you know, wrote further to the ministry at that time. Mr. Chairman, I must also put it on record that I was not the sector minister at the time of this termination. No, I was not the sector minister. What I came to do was to address the difficulties experienced by Wagel and to invite Wagel back to the discussion table. Uh, we did invite them to come back for us to discuss. Unfortunately, at the time of discussion when we approached the Attorney General, the Attorney General did state that a contract that is terminated cannot be renegotiated. So on that basis, we have to enter into new terms of agreement. It was at the point that we were discussing of getting into new terms of agreement that we had a letter, which of course was during my era, by the Wagel company that they have terminated the contract on their own. They were then demanding for a debt of about one billion. They went into arbitration and the court awarded uh, uh, 50 million against the government of Ghana. That is a brief about the termination of the worker contract. Uh, as a follow-up, did you say that you tried to re-engage them after the termination? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, after the termination, which was somewhere uh, in June, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, here a letter in my hand, which I can tell them the 13th of February about the termination. After this termination, I got to the office in September 2020. Jama, Jama, we request further details. Letter 13, what? Signed by who? What title? You are speaking for a record. So give us the details. I will know who is responsible for this uh, judgment debt. Who terminated it? Read it fully for us for a record, Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, attended in this letter the 13th of February 2018, emergency power purchase agreement between the government of Ghana and GPGC Limited, terminating notice. I was terminated on 13th of February 2018 uh, by my predecessor, signed by Honorable Boachi uh, Ajako. Mr. Chairman, but I would think and suspected strongly that this termination was also based on advice from other sectors, because unilaterally, you cannot just terminate a contract of this nature on your own. So he may also have gotten advice based on which he acted. I should read the letter. No, I'm, I'm not, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, nominee, we have a problem with roads. Most of our country trunk roads uh, have not seen bitumen. And um, in the 2020 campaign, everywhere you go across the country, the key issue was roads, 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 and more roads. Why do you think that we should prioritize railway when the basic has not been dealt with? Mr. Chairman, uh, as stated earlier on, if you listen to the President's inaugural address, one of the sectors that he mentioned categorically is the railway sector. Uh, the railway sector in Ghana has been in a very deplorable state, you know, uh, over several years, more than 50 years. 
you will recollect the railway sector in Ghana used to be one of the strongest uh, industry when you talk of Ghana Railway Workers Union at that time. Uh, the railway sector is key because number one, it generates a lot of employment. Number two, it opens up new areas for development. And number three, it's a partial index of a faster trigger of economic growth in terms of GDP. In any emerging country that introduces railway, rail lines into their sector, the rate in terms of you know, sequential jump in GDP is astronomical, and that's an evidence for everybody to see. So I think that a divergence from the rural sector to a railway sector, uh, in the view of the president, is to trigger our economic growth, expand the economy, and make sure that Ghana is prepared. Again, if you look at the World Bank's recommendations for countries that want to trade together, one of their major recommendations is to allow intercontinental trade among those countries. If the intercontinental trade is going to work effectively, then of course we need the rail you know, as a means of transport. Cheaper cost of transportation and faster arrival at destination. This again will lower the cost of our products at the consumer end. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The chairman allows for three questions and two follow-ups. So the second question, um, what was the reason for the termination of the GCGCP contract? What was the reason in the letter that um, you showed us here in this committee? What was the reason for the termination? The, the, the power ministry at that time before 2016, comment a process of rationalization of the energy sector, which of course was a very wonderful idea to see how the energy sector will be well planned so that we do not have uh, more power in terms of uh, 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 generations of more additional powers. So that process continued into 2027, 2017, uh, to look at those power that are coming up, the new IPPs that are coming up. Uh, in the recommendations from the AG office, a number of them have been lifted. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I had a report here with me uh, stating the various power plants and what should be done by them as a recommendation from the AG. Uh, the AG prioritized a lot of the power plants because at that time some of them were supposed to come into commercial operations by the year 2019-2020. So these power plants were prioritized into various sectors. Those that need to be cancelled, those that need to be uh, shifted, and those that can wait after the time that the country would, would need power. Uh, it, uh, GCGP as a power plant under the analysis and report from the uh, Attorney General's office of course, was classified under those power plants that need to be terminated. They were classified basically because there were certain condition precedent they were expected to meet at the time of construction. For instance, they were not, uh, they've not been given granted permits. Uh, Ghana government was expected to undertake some rules, uh, work that of course the government had not done and waiting uh, uh, for it to be done. The, the company itself uh, was expected, for instance, uh, under Section 4G of the agreement provides the buyer uh, the, the necessary means to start the construction of the physical uh, infrastructure. So all these things were done uh, ahead without meeting some of the necessary conditions that were precedent to trigger the construction. Chama, of the Chama, can we request that the nominee either gives us details or he assures us that he would forward same copy for our purposes because we need the categorization, those to be cancelled, those to be suspended, those on this. We need it. Because as he's reading, he's not giving us the details in respect of any entity, what were they supposed to do, what is the condition president. So, uh, but he, he's read something from the Attorney General. We need a date and do submit a copy to Chairman through the clerk for our purposes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a details of the report here which I can send that to the committee for very soon. Later. Maybe you will still be asked questions for yeah. which you need it, so after that. Should I go through? <laughs> yes, are you done? You are done, right. Uh, Honorable Member for Utu Senior, is that right? 
Gisela. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, you are on record to have called ex-president Mahama a con man who failed to salvage the mining sector from the deteriorating activities of illegal miners in the country. What has Mahama been able to do? Are you a con man? Mr. Chairman, no, I am not. Uh, Yes, I'm listening, honorable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, I am not a common, and uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it's on record that I've uh, used that word. Uh, it was in reaction to uh, a statement uh, I issued when I was a land minister in Kumasi. And the implications and the, the dictates of that word was in uh, content with the time I was issuing out the, the statement. Uh, the common man in uh, quotation, it's not directly in reference to what the descriptions uh, might have been. Uh, but if, uh, uh, of course, the Honorable but House... The benefit of hindsight, was that an appropriate word to use? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, yes or no, was that an appropriate word to use? Uh, Chairman was not appropriate word to be used at the time. That's exactly what I'm saying, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, no, hold it there, Chama. Do you want to retract with regret since you don't want the same word used on you as corn man? You do want, you do want to Caesar. Mr. Chama, in that context, I uh, withdraw that word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it's surprising how it has taken him that long to realize that you must respect the office of the president and it has taken you that long to withdraw. The same manner on the night of the 6th, you said you're going to kill all of us here. That is one statement. This is the second. What do we expect as a third? Thank you. No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These are learning stages, and I don't expect the third to come. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you. But he's 53 years old. I don't know when he now learn. Um, Honorable Nomini, what are you to do about encroachment of railway lands? Encroachment of railway lands. The size, the reservations of railway lands have all been encroached. I'm not sure, especially in the urban areas, where slum settlements have developed, makeshift kiosks and so on and so forth, and there's a lot of safety issues with children crisscrossing the railway lines and so on and so forth. What active and proactive measures are you going to be able to take, such that if in your four years of being a railway minister, you're able to achieve uh, substantial uh, development in the sector, at least the communities that live around these areas will be safeguarded and their lives will not be in danger. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think this is a problem within us as a country. As Ghanaians, I think it's time we change our attitude. Uh, the encroachment, it's a very serious problem within the railway uh, industry. Uh, most of the lines currently, as rightly pointed out, have been encroached. Uh, some of the lines that the right of way had been paid for, you know, in the colonial days, people had even taken over. Some of the areas have been uh, given to other uh, people to build their, their, their houses. Uh, what we need to do now, it is a Chairman, if we go ahead to demolish some of those houses, uh, the cost implications are, are quite very dense. And so what the ministry is doing currently is to begin to engage chiefs and other areas along our railway lines to acquire new routes, because we believe the acquisition of the new routes would, of course, be cheaper you know, than coming in to destroy some of these already uh, built houses. And that is why in my earlier submission, I did state that the acquisition of the new rule, which of course is a cost, and most of it is very difficult uh, for government to buy in, we will now begin to make the acquisition as an index or as an element within the project cost. 
So whilst we are building our unit rate, we we'll also build in the, the right of way of acquisition as a cost, so that it becomes very easier for us to acquire those fruit. When we acquire them, what we need to do is to protect them. Because going forward, you will acquire new right of way, and the future difficulty is that they may be encroached upon. But as a country, I think we need to protect them through a lot of engagement, you know, stakeholder engagement, uh, talking to the communities along the railway lines. And, and, and by doing so, we hope that the encroachment will cease in the near future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to the Honorable Nominee. The former Minister for Railways, Honorable Joe Gatti, in 2017, after a meeting with railway workers in Kumasi area, announced the railway ministry intends to build a major cargo terminal in Ejuso. Considering the fact that work has started, or almost about starting, on the Bankrain land port. Will you take steps to ensure that the Eastern Railway line from Tema to Kumase is extended to pass through the inland port at Bankra? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we will take steps to do that. Uh, one of the reasons for the inland ports, as you rightly uh, put it up, is to harbor goods that will be transported from the southern end to the middle belt and then to the, the northern sector. And so it is important that the rail transportation, you know, terminate or pass through that end so that some of the cargoes, of course, will have a place of lodging. So yes, Mr. Chairman, that is one of the lines that I'm going to put uh, much attention when I zoom, if this house give me the note as a sector minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The late CEO of the Railway Authority, Richard Dombo, may his soul rest in perfect peace. In February 2020, he announced that the feasibility studies on the Accra Sky Line, the Accra Sky Train project, has been completed. Can you tell us more about this project and when work will commence? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, let me also use this opportunity uh, once again to uh, extend my condolences to the bereaved family of Richard, uh, which passed away some few days ago as the Chief Executive of the Development Authority. In fact, Mr. Chairman, Richard would have been sitting behind me here today. Uh, he did indicate to me when he left the hospital that he was coming to support me. Uh, I want to say, uh, use this opportunity and extend my condolences to the bereaved family. That project, Mr. Chairman, it's a very important project. Uh, construction work, of course, has not started on that line. Uh, the Ministry has done through aggressive uh, methods to procure uh, feasibility studies as to how the work will be done. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have not yet got into the office, and so I am unable to give uh, uh, this House any assurance of the date of completion when of that project. But what I can assure the House, if given the note, is that I'll put in every measure to make sure that we continue to build on the work of my predecessor. Mr. Chairman, I also acknowledge that my predecessor and the team at the Railway Ministry have done quite a marvelous job. They have laid the foundation for this uh, country railway, and I'm extremely proud of what they have done. Dugati and the other two deputies have done marvelously for this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello. Um, All right. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Honorable nominee, when you were Minister of Lands, uh, the President declared, if I'm permitted to use the word, war against Galamse. You were tasked to lead the charge. A number of interventions took place, including the seizure of uh, excavators. It was also promised that some drones would be purchased. You put the figure at $30 million worth. Later, the interministerial committee chair indicated uh, $500,000 was what was paid. Um, 
I just want to find out from you also because Mr. Eko, Eko Ewusi, uh, later in a caution statement to the CID, indicated that a number of the excavators uh, were taken by you or you sent people to take uh, those excavators. How many excavators did you seize as minister and what happened to them, if you know? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, let me put it on record that while I was a minister for lands and natural resources, I have not seized any excavator. What I did when I was a minister was to ask for withdrawals of excavators from mining sites. And at that period, about 500 excavators were withdrawn from the mining sites, but they were not seized because the methodology to seize excavators, it's a process through the AG's office. The minister unilaterally cannot seize excavators. So my order was for withdrawal of excavators from the mining site. And I did remember that that withdrawal date has been extended for another three months uh, because at that point in time, we realized that excavators do withdrawn from the mining site. So we're still close to the burial site. So we asked that it should be moved further because what was happening at that time, which we note very well, was that most of these excavators were not owned by the miners. The excavators were owned by the separate entity. And so we were going to de detach the mining of excavators from the owners of the licenses, so that the licenses would have a license to mine, the licensee would have a license to mine, but the excavator who needs to come and work on the excavation site will also be licensed so that we have two processes. So these were some of the processes that we, uh, we put in place uh, to uh, undertake. Yes, of course, the interministerial uh, committee uh, which came to uh, handle the situation was a good innovation no by His Excellency, uh, the President. I did say that we are going to procure a number of drones at the cost of 30 billion cities. These drones are high-tech drones. They are not the normal drones that we see flying, you know, in a craft. And we did remember that when we engaged uh, one of the dealers in the drone from the United States of America, uh, the price they gave us at that time was 30 million uh, for the number of drones. I think we were going to acquire about five drones uh, at that time. Unfortunately, we were not able to uh, acquire the drones, but the processes to address the Galamse menace have been transferred to the Interministerial Committee, which therefore took over uh, from you as I was in the office. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman. What, you want to follow up? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'm grateful. Honorable mm -hmm. uh follow up to what uh, the question by the Honorable Member. When people say that 500 excavators were seized and vanished into thin air, you have spoken to these ex excavators purported to have been seized and, you know, and lost. What would be your reaction to those who say that they were seized and then they vanished. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I personally have also been tagged as taking, I think, 20 excavators or so, uh, but of course, uh, which is not true. Uh, I did state that uh, I ordered for the withdrawal of excavators from the site, but after the interministerial committee, of course, which I am a member, I was a member, uh, some excavators were seized. Uh, as to whether they vanished or not, I don't think that is the issue. The excavators that were seized went through the process of seizing the excavators, and they've all been under the, uh, the, the auspices of the chairman of the Interministerial Committee. And this has been transported, some of them have been transported to uh, Accra. I don't know and I have no idea uh, as a fact to tell this committee that a number of them has gone missing. I have, I have I haven't got that record, and it's, it's it's not known to me that any of those excavators uh, have gone missing.